And now, please welcome the Chief Technology Officer of Saudi Tourism Authority, Kwek Chun Yan, in conversation with Skift founder and CEO, Rafid Ali. All right, so um, we're in the home, uh, should I say the home stretch? I guess the home stretch of the, of the Global Forum. Everybody who sticks gets a free trip personally from me, so please stick around till the last, till the last moment. Uh, delighted to have Chun on stage with us. Chun is the CTO of Saudi Tourism Authority. Uh, when you think about tourism boards, and you were doing, you were also the CTO of Singapore Tourism Board prior to this as well. That's right. For many years. When you think of tourism boards, you really don't think of CTOs. <laughs> so what does a CTO do at a tourism board? Oh, glad to be here, Rafat. Um, so I think I have the best job in the world, right? I know a lot of people say that, but you think about it. Saudi Arabia is the first uh, new destination and the largest one for maybe the last 50 years. Um, the good news is, um, because there's no tourism before that, there is virtually no infrastructure for tourism, digital infrastructure, uh, no data analytics, and so on. So we get to invent the future of tourism right there without the baggage of what's been done in tourism and travel for the last 50 years. So we get to think about things that are out of the box. You think about how, uh, if, if you know China, right? Um, nobody, most of the people in China, they don't have landline phones in their homes. Because it never came. Yeah, by the time they had telephones, everything was mobile. So everybody just went straight and jumped past that into mobile phones. So what we get to do now is to think about the future of tourism from a purely digital first and maybe possibly, in some cases, digitally only methods and be a lot more efficient and hopefully leapfrog the competition. And so Saudi has huge ambitions. I think there's just no secret to anybody in this room or really anybody in the world in terms of tourism, in terms of what it wants to tell the world about Saudi itself and the new Saudi that's emerging. Um, the infrastructure that you're building, the it's actually real physical infrastructure, huge amount of development. Many of the people on stage yesterday and today have huge investments coming into the country as well. How much of the, in, how much of the capacity is online today and how much is to come? Oh, Rafa, uh, if, you, if you went to Saudi today, you will see a lot of construction in almost every part of the country, but I think we are barely breaking the surface. Right? Today, we have about 5,000 properties uh, bookable. Um, of that, the, the accommodation capacity, occupancy is about maybe 50%. So ready capacity today, we're only half filled. Right? So I always like to see the glass as half, and half full. So we have a long way to go. Um, by 2030, we hope to hit 100 million visitors every year. Uh, we're barely scratching the surface. And right? this is not counting the, medic, uh, the religious tourists? This is not. So we are also, I think, maybe unique in the world where we have a, a segment called religious travel, uh, where people go to Saudi Arabia for Hajj and Umrah. Right? And that is something that's deeply religious, and it's the only place in the world where you can do it. Right. So um, in terms of uh, your job, as the CTO, obviously Saudi Tourism Authority, um, uh, what, what is the state of actual non-religious tourists coming today? Obviously you have a big job of convincing the world that this is the new Saudi. You coming from Singapore, I guess you're seeing the new Saudi now with new eyes because uh, obviously you didn't live there. So from your sense, what are these changes happening and what does travel industry at large have to, are, what are the misconceptions, if you will, and how do you help them overcome it? Sure. Um, let me tell you uh, the perspective of someone who went from Singapore to Saudi Arabia. Right? I've been living there physically for a year. Um, I'll tell you this, right? and I told some of the friends who I met uh, at the conference uh, yesterday. In the one year that I've been there, not a single person, and I walk around the streets, uh, you know, nobody knows that I'm the CTO of the Tourism Authority. Um, I go to shopping malls, uh, I walk around, have uh, food around different diners and so on, and not a single person has ever said a mean thing to me. Nobody has ever sworn at me. Um, nobody has said a mean thing. I, I have been to malls where you know, a couple of guys will come to me and say, hey, um, are, you, are you new here? Uh, welcome to Saudi. Would you like to have dinner with us? Now in New York, <laughs> in New York. Or Singapore. You, you got to hold on to your wallet and your phone, right? 
No, no, that's not true. Let's not, let's not, let's not get there. Let's not get. Don't be the, don't be the. Anyway, never mind. Let's sure. continue. But you understand, right? This is, I think, uh, Saudi Arabia is, is unique in that. When when I go park in front of a 7-Eleven, I don't even lock my car, right? And it's perfectly safe. So these are the things that people don't understand. It's a really rich culture. There's a concept called hafawa in, in Islam, where it's about welcoming people, right, especially strangers, into your home. And they really practice that. I think that's a great thing, and especially for hospitality and tourism. It's a fantastic value to have. And one of the, your jobs uh, is also to educate the locals that Saudi is changing and that, uh, that, that the, the the, it needs to be open to the world. So how much are you thinking about it's as much education of the locals as it is trying to attract people from outside? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the greatest thing about travel is that as much as uh, when, as travelers, when we go to a new destination, we want to learn and experience new things, um, experience the culture, try the food and so on. It also impacts the people that we visit, right? So the Saudis are learning a lot about the foreign world. Saudis already travel a lot, right? But realistically, as in most countries, um, the more affluent people will tend to travel a little bit more. The less affluent will travel less. But with the influx of visitors from all over the world, they're learning about what the world at large is about. Um, I think that's fantastic because it leads to job creation, better education, and better job opportunities for everyone. I think you know in the last five years, Saudi has very much started to liberalize a lot of the things. Five years ago, you, women couldn't drive. Um, they couldn't get driver's licenses. They couldn't start businesses and so on. Today, that's not true, right? You can, women are entrepreneurs. They own their own businesses and so on. Um, we have uh, every year and uh, this quarter as well, there's a, a, the world's, I think, largest uh, concert. It's called Middle Beast, MDL Beast. Um, it has 700,000 people in a concert. And if you were to look at it, just Google it, right, or visit it, you would not believe that that was in Saudi Arabia. I guarantee you that. Well, so uh, most of you may, may not know this. My personal connection to Saudi is my, my, half of my family lives there. Saudi, I know the changes firsthand of what's happening uh, there as well. So the level of ambition that you have in terms of Neom, in terms of Red Sea, in terms of Alula and all these um, other uh, things, how much, um, and you're always in the, the, the messaging that's coming out of Saudi is we're very focused on sustainability. It is the core of what you want to achieve. So, and we've had a lot of talk about sustainability here over the last two days as well. Um, what's your sense of how much uh, do you want to lean into it? How much is real? How much could become real? Um, we are, I think, going all in on sustainability. So maybe just to, for the audience uh, benefit, Neom is a, a city. Right, and a biggest part of it is something called the line. It's 170 kilometers, about 100 miles long. Right, 100% of that will be not just uh, ecologically and carbon footprint neutral, but actually um, environmentally positive, net positive conservation. Meaning you're not just trying to break even with the environmental impact, you're actually gonna improve the environment that you build. 95% of the construction around Neom will be environmentally the same. They're keeping it around there. So imagine you're trying to build a giant city 170 kilometers long while still trying to keep it ecologically net positive. The amount of ambition and cost and thinking and planning that needs to go into that is astronomical, right? Um, the Red Sea is 32,000 square kilometers. Um, for the metric challenge, um, that's about the size of the state of Maryland or the country of Belgium, right? So that whole area is designed and sensitively designed to make sure that there's massive construction, but at the same time, ecologically stable. They have decided and looked at every single species that exists there so that the critically stable, uh, critically important ones are actually kept and maintained so that they are not impacted by the construction. Well, the good news is that since we're skipped, we're gonna, we're gonna look at each of your claims and hold you to it Sure. on, on skipped. Um, talk about, so uh, one of the things that you're working on and turns out we and you are working on together is this innovation index that, that we're creating for the world uh, at large, not just for Saudi. So talk about that and we're in the early stages of 
working on this together? Sure. So as we look at the future of tourism, um, as you said, we don't have uh, existing infrastructure and so on to manage. So we can think about how to create the future of tourism together. And we love to working with Skift because they bring some good ideas from all the different people that we've heard in the last day and a half. And we think that the future of tourism comes from some of the forward thinkers in tourism, whether it's from the private sector or the government, working together to think how travel should be the next 20, 30, 50 years. Just as we are building Neom and, and the Red Sea, I don't think we claim that we have the best ideas in the world. We have the ambition. You name a country today that could build a 170 kilometer long city or conserve 320 square kilometers. Um, we have the resources, sure, but I think we also have the political will. So this is a unique time in history where travel can be reinvented. And Saudi is just the entire place where you can do these kinds of pilots and showcases and test them out. So we're looking for like-minded people to work with us to see if we could create the future of tourism together. The index is just a way to understand where the innovation is happening and maybe help to isolate where the areas where we can learn lessons from each other. So we are just at the start of that project. Our goal is to launch it by the end of the year, uh, potentially at WTTC's uh, Global Summit that's happening in Riyadh as well. So um, hopefully it'll work there. Um, quick thing, you are Singaporean, your family lives in Seattle, and you uh, are spending time in Saudi. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Saudi, uh, Singapore to Riyadh is a 14 hour yes. flight. Yeah. Riyadh to, Singapore, to Seattle is how long? Uh, it's also 14 hours. 14 hour flight, oh my God. So which airline do you have status on? <laughs> Almost all of them. <laughs> Almost all of them. <laughs> so just this year, I've uh, circulated the earth uh, three times already, about to do a fourth turn. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you, Chun. Thank you for Thank this. Thank you. Appreciate it.